Today we're going to be going over the basics of the microscope. We're going to be using a um, compound light microscope and I'm going to be going through each of the different parts and their functions. So be sure to write this down on your note sheet. So the eyepiece contains the ocular lens and it typically has a magnification of about 10x. Next is the body tube and it's responsible for connecting the eyepiece with the nose piece. The nose piece holds the objective lenses and the objective lenses are here. And the objective lenses run from low power to high power. There's typically about three objective lenses. Um, the lowest power is usually about a 4x magnification. The um, second largest magnification is, or the medium sized objective lens is um, 10x magnification. And the largest objective lens is usually a 40x magnification. Sometimes you'll find a fourth objective lens on a compound light microscope and it will be labeled oil. This is an oil immersion objective lens and it's something that you would use in conjunction with a particular type of oil in order to increase your magnification even more. That's something that we're not going to be using in this class. Below you have your stage and your stage clips. Your stage is responsible for holding your slide with your specimen and your stage clips are responsible for clipping your specimen into place or the slide into place so it doesn't move around on the stage. Below the stage is the diaphragm and the diaphragm is responsible for regulating the amount of light that hits the specimen. You'll notice that there is a hole in the stage and in this uh, hole in the stage and that is so that light can reach the specimen and illuminate the specimen and um, so that you can actually see uh, what you're supposed to be looking at. Below is the light and the light is responsible for projecting um, the light up through the diaphragm, through the stage, into the objective lens and on into the eyepiece into your eye so you can actually see what it is you are looking at. Next we have the coarse adjustment knob or the largest knob on the microscope that is responsible for moving the stage up and down and is used in order to focus your specimen. Below the coarse adjustment knob or the smallest knob on the microscope is the fine adjustment knob and that's responsible for sharpening the image. So if you're, you get your specimen into focus but the edges seem a little bit fuzzy, you'd be using the fine adjustment knob in order to fine tune your image so that it is sharp and clear. Next is the arm and the arm is used while holding the light microscope and the base is used to support um, the rest of the microscope components. Um, when you do carry a light microscope, you always need to use two hands. So you'll be using one hand at the base and the other hand at the arm in order to carry the microscope. Let's take a closer look at how to calculate power. So to calculate the power of magnification, you're going to be multiplying the power of the ocular lens by the power of the objective lens. Now remember that the ocular lens usually has a 10x magnification. Um, and then our three objective lenses have um, powers of 4x, 10x, and 40x. And here you can see an objective lens uh, with a 40x magnification. All the objectives as well as the ocular lens have their magnifications written on them. So you should be able to figure out um, what the power of your ocular lens is or the power of your objective lens is, regardless of the microscope you might be using. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. Okay, so in order to calculate um, the power of magnification, again, we're looking at multiplying the power of the ocular lens by the power of the objective lens. So here I've got my um, 10x. Um, this is my ocular lens magnification. And then here I've got my, here I have a 40x objective. So this is going to be, usually this is my largest objective lens. And then I just multiply the two of those together and I would get a magnification of 400x. Um, so, um, 
I would be getting a magnification of 400x. So whatever I would be looking at would be magnified 400 times, whether that is a eyelash or a penny. Um, so whatever it is I'm looking at would be magnified about 400 times. Um, what are the powers of magnification for each of the objectives we have in our scopes? Um, you're going to be filling in a table on your worksheet in order to do that. So um, you'll go up and either take a look at one of the microscopes that I have set out or be grabbing a microscope from the cabinet and taking a look at the objectives um, and their powers of magnification. So comparing powers of magnification, what this means is that we can see better details with a higher magnification, but we can't see as much of, this much of the image. So what this in fact means is that as magnification increases, our field of view in fact decreases. So if we take a look at the bald eagles over here, we can see under the low um, magnification that we can see the eagle and its beak and its eyes and this field of blue in the background. Well, as we increase the magnification um, to a 10x, our field of view or what we're able to see actually decreases, but we're able to see in more detail. We actually have a zoomed in picture of the beak. We can see more details of the eyes. We can actually see the nostrils of the beak. Um, and um, so we are starting to beginning to see um, the lines of the mouth. So which of these images would be viewed at a high power of magnification? This would be viewed under low power because you are seeing a whole lot of bacteria and this you would be seeing under a high power of magnification because you are seeing less of the overall image and you're zooming in on a specific portion, specifically this portion right here. So how do you focus a light microscope? This is a slide that you might want to print out and keep with you in your binder as a reference of how to focus a light microscope. First thing you want to do is you want to turn on the microscope. So make sure that thing is plugged in and turn it on. Then you're going to rotate the nose piece and click it into the smallest objective, which should be the 4x objective. Once you do that, you are going to use the course adjustment knob or the large knob and lower the stage as far as it can go. Then you're going to place the slide on the stage and can secure it using the stage clips. Then you're going to use the course adjustment knob again to get the image into view. So you're going to rotate that uh, course adjustment knob upward so the stage should be rising to meet the objective. And then once you've got that specimen in focus, you're going to use the fine adjustment knob or the small knob to make it crystal clear and to get that um, sharpened image. Once you have the image in view, you're going to rotate the nose piece to view it under the different powers. So the next highest power would be the 10x objective, and then the highest power would be the 40x objective. And then you're going to draw what you see on your worksheet or in your notebook of what you're observing. You always need to make sure that you write down um, the power of magnification that you are viewing the specimen under, which means that you're going to have to multiply that ocular lens, that 10x, by whatever objective lens you are looking at your specimen under. Again, be careful with the largest objective. Sometimes there's not enough room and you've already gotten pretty clear focus under the 10x objective, so you might not be able to use your highest um, objective lens. Uh, when you are done, turn off the microscope and put, the, put um, away the slides that you used. Um, if for whatever reason, as you are moving um, to different powers or to different objective lenses and you lose focus of your specimen, just go down to the next um, lowest um, objective lens and try and find your image there and then try and refocus again at a higher objective. How do you make a wet mount slide? Well, first you need to get a clean slide and a cover slip from me, your teacher. Then you're going to place one drop of water in the middle of the slide. Um, you don't want to use too much water, otherwise it will run off the edge and make a total mess. 
Uh, then you are going to place the edge of the cover slip on one side of the drop of water. And then you are going to slowly lower the cover slip onto, on top of the drop of water. So here we've got a cover slip and you are going to lower um, that cover slip slowly over the drop of water. Next you're going to place the slide on the stage and you're going to view it first with the smallest objective. Once you see an image, you can then rotate the nose piece to view the slide under the different objectives. There's no need to use stage clips when viewing a wet mount slide. More about microscopes. Um, the most commonly used microscope is a light microscope, which is the compound microscope that we are going to be using in class. However, there are other types of microscopes. The other type of microscope I want to mention is the electron microscope. The electron microscope uses a beam of electrons to view a specimen. Um, it's capable of revealing details smaller than a light microscope. So when scientists want to study um, in greater detail, um, they're going to be using um, one of the two main kinds of electron microscopes. They'll either use a scanning electron microscope or a SEM or a transition electron microscope, a TEM. A scanning electron microscope is used to produce 3D images of the surface of cells or whatever object you're looking at. So for here in this picture, you can clearly see the 3D image and the surface of the head of an ant, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Um, a transition electron microscope is used to view structures within cells or cross sections of specimens. So what ends up happening is they will um, freeze um, a specimen um, and then coat it in usually a metal, whether that be um, a light coating of gold or something, and then they will take small slivers or cross sections of that specimen and then place it under the transition electron microscope to view structures within the cell. So here we're looking at um, plant cells and we're looking at the large vacuoles in plant cells um, and so on and so forth. So main difference between scanning an elect uh, scanning electron microscope and a transition electron microscope is the scanning, you're scanning the surface of something so you're going to get a 3D image of the object whereas a transition electron microscope um, you're going to be looking at structures within whatever specimen you're looking at. So to review, um, you need to know the parts of the microscope and their functions for let's say a test or a quiz. You should be able to calculate the magnification that you're observing a your specimen and then you need to be able to tell me what happens to an image when you increase the magnification. Um, be sure to use the vocabulary review cards to help you with parts of the microscope and their function. And good luck.